In a shocking turn of events, Damian Lillard has been traded. Now yes, we all expected him to be traded, but to the Milwaukee Bucks? The Damian Lillard trade that sent the perennial all-star point guard from the Portland Trailblazers to the Milwaukee Bucks in a blockbuster three-team deal with the Phoenix Suns has sent shockwaves throughout the entire NBA landscape. This trade not only reshapes the Bucks, Suns, and Blazers rosters tremendously, but also has far-reaching implications for the league as a whole, fundamentally altering the power dynamics in both the Eastern and Western Conference, creating a new super team in the NBA that very well might be the best in the NBA. And on top of that, with Drew Holiday being sent to the Boston Celtics, this makes things very, very interesting, so stay tuned. This all starts with Damian Lillard, who's been the face of the Portland Trailblazers for over a decade and was the subject of intense trade speculation throughout the 2021 and 2022 offseason. It became increasingly clear that Lillard, despite his unwavering loyalty to the Blazers, was growing frustrated with the team's inability to build a championship contender around him. The failure to surround him with the sufficient talent to make a deep playoff run finally led to his formal trade request in early July, specifically to the Miami Heat. After trying to work a trade, they came off the table with the Heat not having enough assets to intrigue the Blazers. Weeks later, the Bucks swooped in, setting the stage for one of the most significant trades in recent NBA history. When talking about winners and losers of this trade, it all starts with the Milwaukee Bucks, who were the clear winners in this trade and have completely taken their roster talent level to another level. The Milwaukee Bucks, fresh off their 2021 NBA Championship victory, led by Giannis Antetokounmpo, emerged as a surprising destination for Damian Lillard. This move instantly elevates the Bucks to super team status, pairing two of the league's premier talents in Lillard and Antetokounmpo. The Bucks, who were already considered strong contenders, are now the consensus favorites to win the NBA title, dramatically improving their odds. Lillard's arrival to Milwaukee reshapes the team's offensive dynamics. His scoring prowess and ability to create offense both for himself and his teammates are well documented. He's renowned for his long-range shooting, clutch performances, and uncanny ability to break down defenses off the dribble. Paired with Giannis Antetokounmpo's dominant inside presence and versatile skill set, the Bucks now possess one of the most formidable offensive duos in the league. This combination of inside-outside dominance could make the Bucks virtually unstoppable on the offensive end. The Bucks' entire offensive game plan is to run their offense through Giannis and surround him with shooters. Not only have they added one of the best shooters in the NBA in Damian Lillard, who can shoot from the logo like it's nothing, he also provides beyond elite ability to create offense for himself and his teammates, especially in crunch time. Lillard has no problem scoring on two or three defenders and making plays under extreme pressure which opens up the court for the Bucks even more. We're more likely to see Lillard play off the ball now that he's on the Bucks, using him to come off screens for shots, but when he does have the ball, this sets the stage for endless opportunities. Pick and rolls with Giannis and Brooke Lopez could be deadly, especially with Giannis's athleticism and Lopez's ability to stretch the floor. Adding the fact that Chris Middleton is still on the team makes everything so much more enticing, with his elite ability to stretch the floor and defend the opposing team's best perimeter players. The Bucks still have great bench pieces in Bobby Portis, who's fresh off his stint with Team USA, and Malik Beasley and Marjan Poch including Pat Connaughton as well, who could be key bench pieces this year. What I like the most about this trade is not only that the Bucks got another star player, but the fit is there. Lillard should fit in seamlessly with the Bucks, and with that, I have them going neck and neck with the Boston Celtics for the Eastern Conference. The Eastern Conference, which had been highly competitive, is now facing a new reality, with the Bucks as the dominant force. The cost of acquiring Lillard, however, did come at a cost for the Bucks. The trade saw them part ways with Drew Holiday, a key player in their championship run, and a cornerstone of their backcourt. Holiday's defensive prowess and leadership on the floor were instrumental in the Bucks' success, and his departure leaves significant void. The Bucks also surrendered their 2029 unprotected first round draft pick and swap rights for the Bucks' 2028 and 2030 picks, adding a future asset to sweeten the deal. This could be heavily risky down the road though, because if something bad happens with age, injuries, or departures of players like Giannis, Dame, Chris Middleton, or more, the Bucks could be a lottery team from 2028 to 2030, and by then, the Blazers will have no problem taking all three of those picks from the Bucks in exchange for their late first round picks. Grayson Allen, a sharpshooting 3 and D player who had shown promise, was also sent to the Phoenix Suns in the trade. While not a star player, Allen's contributions as a floor spacer and perimeter defender will be missed by the Bucks. His departure opens up opportunities for other players, such as Pat Connington, Malik Beasley, and Marjon Bochan to step up into expanded roles. I think this is an overall great move, both in the short picture and long term picture. The Bucks supercharged their offense with a top 75 player of all time, who's lethal in the pick and roll and known for making his big even better. 
put Damian Lillard with Giannis Antetokounmpo, and that's going to be an insane offensive explosion this season. He's going to energize a team that frankly has been kind of floundering a little bit in its identity since winning the title. The only thing you could say bad about this trade is it is a little bit of a downgrade on their perimeter defense. I love Drew Holiday, and I think he's going to give the Bucks a really hard time on the Celtics. But however, he isn't Damian Lillard. He's so good in the clutch, which is an area that Milwaukee has occasionally had problems in with key moments in the playoff series. And then if you look in the long term, you have to look at the fact that Giannis was basically threatening to leave over the past month or two. And this trade is delivering him exactly what he wants. You're making him happy and you're taking the pressure off this season of getting questions every month about if Giannis is happy enough and if he'll stay in Milwaukee. Plus, Drew Holiday was already on an expiring contract, whereas early as this coming spring, they would have been faced with the question of, do we want to hand him 200 million plus dollars? And now because of this, they no longer have to deal with that anymore. And another huge thing for the Bucks is that Damian Lillard is not going to the Miami Heat, which is the team that knocked the Bucks out the playoffs last year. So keeping him away from Miami is also a huge win. So overall, there's just many things to like about this trade for the Bucks. But the only winner in my eyes isn't just the Milwaukee Bucks. I think the Portland Trailblazers got a big time return for their star guard, especially considering the day and age we're in in today's NBA, with trade packages becoming less and less strong. For the Portland Trailblazers, this signifies the end of an era. Altogether, the Trailblazers gave up Damian Lillard, Yusuf Nurkic, Nazir Little, and Keon Johnson. Damian Lillard, the franchise's all-time leading scorer and three-point shooter, departs after 11 seasons with the team. His departure marks the beginning of a rebuild phase for Portland, which has struggled to assemble a championship caliber roster around him. In return for Lillard, the Blazers received Drew Holiday, DeAndre Ayton, and a 2029 Milwaukee first round pick, and a 2028 and 2030 pick swap. The Blazers then traded Drew Holiday to the Boston Celtics for Malcolm Brogdon, Robert Williams, a 2024 Warriors first round pick, and a 2029 unprotected Boston Celtics first round pick. I absolutely love what the Blazers are doing here and how they're going about this rebuild in the best way possible. By adding former first overall pick, Pick DeAndre Ayton to the young core, he fills a hole they need at centering, and by giving Ayton a fresh start, that's all he could possibly need to fulfill his potential. On top of that, I think Robert Williams was a great pickup for the Blazers to give them a nice young defensive center to develop and will be under no pressure to play big minutes right away and let him fully recover from injuries. But quite honestly, my favorite part of what the Blazers got was the draft capital. I don't think the NBA world has any idea how valuable some of these picks and pick swaps will be. The 2024 Warriors pick should be a late first rounder, but when you consider that 2029 is six years away and guys like Damian Lillard, Drew Holiday, Chris Stapps Przingis, Chris Middleton, Brooke Lopez, and more key Key players from the Bucks and Celtics will be out the league, it's not outlandish to think that both of those picks could end up being lottery picks. On top of that, the Blazers have options to swap picks with the Bucks in 2028 and 2030. And by then, the Blazers should already be one of the top teams in the West with Scoot Henderson, Shaden Sharp, DeAndre Ayton, potentially Anthony Simons if he stays, and the next three to four lottery picks the Blazers will take between 2024 and 2027. The Blazers will have a great core of young players already looking to contend for a championship, and will have more draft picks to add to that core, which is great. If you've been watching my videos for a while now, you know I'm a huge fan of Scoot Henderson's game and have preached on several videos that the Blazers need to rebuild around Scoot and Shaden. And by making this trade, this gives the team a brand new roster around the two young guards to build around, leaving the Portland Trailblazers with only one remaining player from their 2019 Conference Finals runs in Anthony Simons, who was already a young rookie at the time. But unfortunately, with three teams involved in a trade and two of them being winners, one will have to take a loss, and that's the Phoenix Suns who reached the NBA Finals in 2021 and have completely restructured their roster by acquiring new players and parting ways with DeAndre Ayton. Ayton, the 2018 number one overall pick, had been a critical contributor to the Suns' success and was regarded as a promising young talent. In exchange for Ayton, the Suns received Yusuf Nurkic, who has had trouble staying healthy in recent years. Additionally, they acquired Grayson Allen, Nazir Little, and Keon Johnson, providing depth and versatility to their lineup. Nurkic is a versatile center who, if he stays healthy, can score in the paint and protect the rim, should complement the Suns' playing style well. His presence in the front court gives the Suns added depth and options in their rotation if he's healthy. Grayson Allen, known for his outside shooting and defensive tenacity, provides another valuable piece to the Suns' perimeter rotation. Nazir Little, a young forward with untapped potential, could develop into a key contributor to the Suns. His athleticism, defensive capabilities, and ability to impact the game on both ends of the floor make him an intriguing prospect, but I do have concerns on how he'll make an immediate impact. Keon Johnson, another young talent who might not make an immediate impact, adds depth to the Suns roster and could provide valuable minutes off the bench. The Suns reshaped roster now features a mix of established veterans and promising young players providing balance and flexibility. While they lose DeAndre Ayton's presence in the paint, they gain depth 
and versatility that can help them remain competitive in the Western Conference. But with Aiton gone, the amount of big moves the Suns can still make is very limited, and they still haven't filled out their main hole at that starting point guard spot. We saw in the Suns 2021 Finals run how valuable it was to have a starting point guard that can control the game in Chris Paul. Without one, and losing her starting center, I have some major questions about how this team will perform. But with that aside, the impact of this blockbuster trade reaches even further, influencing the dynamics of the entire NBA landscape. The Milwaukee Bucks, already considered strong contenders, significantly improved their odds, looking to go neck and neck with another team in the East. Their status as a super team places them at the forefront of the league's elite. But just a few days after this trade, the Boston Celtics swarmed in and got Drew Holiday from the Blazers and made things very interesting in the East. After losing Marcus Smart, the Celtics arguably get a better defensive guard in Drew Holiday, who can initiate the offense while still having Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, and Kristaps Porzingis. The Celtics also still have some depth in guys like Al Horford, Derek White, Peyton Pritchard, and more. Overall, the Damian Lillard trade has sent shockwaves through the NBA. The Milwaukee Bucks are now the team to beat in the Eastern Conference, along with the Boston Celtics, boasting a formidable duo in Lillard and Antetokounmpo, and we'll see a lot of matchups with them going head-to-head -head with the Celtics' four-man tandem of Holiday, Brown, Tatum, and Porzingis. The Portland Trailblazers are in full rebuilding mode after bidding farewell to their franchise player, and the Phoenix Suns added depth to their roster which was much needed, but still have some holes to fill. This trade is a game changer with ripple effects that will be closely monitored as the 2024 NBA season unfolds. It marks a pivotal moment in the league, with the balance of power shifting and the landscape of contenders significantly altered.